Good afternoon and welcome to the Software Engineering Institute's webinar series. My name is Shane McGraw, your moderator for today, and I'd like to thank you all for attending today's virtual tutorial. Our webinar series presentation today is part two of Architecture and Design of Service-Oriented Systems by Grace Lewis. Grace Lewis is a senior member of the technical staff at the SEI at Carnegie Mellon University. Lewis has over 20 years of professional development, software development experience, mainly in the industry. Her main areas of expertise include service-oriented architecture, cloud computing, and mobile applications. And now I will turn the presentation over to Grace Lewis. Grace, all yours. Thank you very much, Shane, and welcome, uh, welcome back to those who were with us last time, and uh, a brand new welcome to those that are joining us for the first time. Um, for those that are joining us for the first time, I hope that you ha had a chance to go over the materials for part one, because I will be referring extensively to them throughout this part of the tutorial. However, um, our agenda for today is, is very simple. Uh, we will review, we will do a very short review of, of part one, what we discussed in the, in the first instance of this tutorial. Um, and then we're going to focus on two things. One is on SOA infrastructure design, and the other one is on service design. And finally, we're going to just a, a very brief summary of what we've covered so far. Um, the goals for the tutorial, as I presented last time, were first of all to discuss very basic concepts related to software architecture design. Hopefully we covered that in the first part. Then we were going to talk about the impact of service orientation on system qualities, and, ho and hopefully we also address that in the first part. So today, as I said, we're going to focus on SOA infrastructure design considerations, and specifically we're going to go into, into an enterprise service bus, what that means from a patterns and from a tactics perspective, uh, be, because it is, it is the, I would say it's, it is the main um, example of what a SOA infrastructure is. After we've covered infrastructure, we're going to go into design, so we're going to discuss principles of service design. And the end goal for the tutorial as a whole is to really provide us a starting point for how to use quality attribute requirements as you design um, and architect um, infrastructures and services um, in service-oriented systems. So quickly a review of part one. Um, one of the things we said last time is that uh, a soft, it is very important to, to focus on software architecture because it is that earliest lifecycle artifact that has, that has a lot of the design decisions that you have to make. Mainly, what are your design choices and what are the trade-offs that, that you have made in designing your system? The second is that the way we make design decisions is in the context of architecturally significant requirements. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the questions that we got last week was, how do you know which ones are your architecturally significant requirements? And the answer to that question last time was that there, I mean, there are many ways of prioritizing quality attributes, but basically it becomes what are, the, what are your number one quality, what are your number one priority quality attributes? And a technique that we shared for doing that is something called the QAW, the Quality Attribute Workshop which is based on using scenarios to capture those architecturally significant requirements and then prioritizing them. The other thing we talked about is architectural design patterns. We said that usually when people pick an architectural design pattern is because they want to promote one or two qualities that are important to an organization, which is really why patterns are, are typically used in conjunction. You, you put them together to, in, in order to accomplish a full system, but you do it um, using the common design patterns to promote uh, particular quality attributes. Um, specifically regarding quality attributes, we said that service orientation as an architectural style or design pattern tends to promote interoperability and modifiability, but often at the expense of performance. And we also said at the expense of security sometimes. And finally, we said that service orientation is a starting point that, that is often augmented by other patterns and tactics to, for, to get a complete architectural solution. Um, as Shane said at the beginning, if anybody has any questions, I would appreciate if they're asked. I mean, you just share them with him, and then he'll share them with me, um, because it, I would rather answer questions as we're going through the presentation as opposed to um, all the way at the end, although I will leave plenty of time to answer questions at the end. So, Shane, do we have any questions? Uh, no, no questions at this point. The, the one question we have was uh, from Craig asking, if I could make the PDF of the slides from last week available, uh, and Craig, that's a good idea. I should have thought of that. They're, they're not in your console now. 
but the recording is available. Um, if you have a registration from last week, that, that link is still active and the slides are in, in, available in, in last week's recording. Um, and we can also send them out after the event, but uh, that's the only question so far, Grace. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Shane. Thank you, Shane. So let's go into SOA infrastructure design considerations. So this is the, I would call this a notional architecture um, that we presented last time. And we, we talked about the different components of a service-oriented system. We talked about the services and how they were divided into inf interface and implementation. We talked about the consumers as the, p let's say, pieces of code for now that use these services. And finally, what sits in the middle is something we call SOA infrastructure. And it's typically a combination of, some, uh, of, a, of a piece of middleware um, in, com in combination with the actual network and in combination with something that we call infrastructure services, which in examples of those are security services, discovery services, or data transformation services. So we're going to focus exclusively on that area that is outlined in that, in that blue oval. Hopefully it's blue for everybody because I know it's, it's, it gets different colors depending on your screen.